Who actually has a chance at snow on Christmas this year and why things get very interesting thereafter as we get into the new year. Hi everybody, I'm Chief Meteorologist Chris Justice mapping out the pattern that starts with this front that's brought thunder to the area and you know what they say. If you hear thunder in December, there's a chance for snow 10 days later. So many people will say the data doesn't show that and, and they're right. I mean the data doesn't necessarily prove or disprove that theory, but the, the saying is made for a reason. It's when it's so volatile in December to get uh, thunder surely enough it's false enough to give you snow and that just means the jet streams active hi everybody i'm chief meteorologist chris justice please let me know where in the world you're watching from right now like this video subscribe to this channel for more and turn on those notifications in this video i'm going to map out who is going to see snow and how much for christmas plus or minus a day because right you're, you're there and you want to see it we'll get close enough to that and then we'll look closer at what the models are trying to show could be a signal for December 28th through January 2nd now I know that's a long ways out and I'm going to be the first to tell you that there's not really much detail in the skills at, at forecasting 10 plus days out but there are ways we can look at the signal just like with tropical forecasting we can look at a signal is the pattern favorable for tropical activity is it not or in this case, is the pattern favorable for snow or is it not? Well, here we are with the thunderstorms rolling through a Thursday evening into the overnight hours. And then Friday's all about clearing. It's going to get windy, very, very windy. Let me show you those winds. The gusts are going to get very high. High wind warnings already in place for Tennessee into North Carolina. Those gusts are going to climb to above 60 miles per hour in the higher elevations of the mountains, 40 to 50 miles per hour elsewhere. Look at the gusts up here through the Northeast, New York, Pennsylvania to Jersey. I mean, we're talking 60, 65 mile per hour gusts. That could lead to some isolated power outages. I mean, this is nothing we haven't done before, but it is certainly a, a little punch coming on through. How about temperatures? It is cooled down. Uh, we're going to see temperatures uh, be quite chilly on Friday for many areas, uh, teens and 20s up through the upper Midwest and to the Northeast, and then 30s for Western North Carolina, barely getting to 40, and then we plummet down by Saturday morning. Most areas waking up to the 20s. It's going to be cold. When you factor in the wind chill, uh, it gets really, really chilly in some locations. Look at those sub-zero wind chill values in the upper Midwest uh, you know, Friday mid-morning, and then going into Friday afternoon. We got 12 in Boone. We got uh, single digits up here from Snowshoe North into parts of Pennsylvania and New York. It's going to be mighty, mighty cold going into the weekend, and that sets the stage for Christmas week. Let's go over that a little bit here. Let's start with the European model. Who sees snow and who sees what? All right, so here we go. It gets really mild Saturday into Sunday. We're talking 50s going to 60s, um, but another front's coming through. It's a quick-hitting little front, but what that does is make it cool again for many areas on Monday. It's short-lived. We're going to see a big ridge build back in here, and that's going to allow for things to begin to warm up by midweek. Wednesday, Christmas Eve, looks to be really, really warm. Look at those ISO bars, those orange bars right here. That shows you who gets warmer weather, and it could be significant warm weather. In fact, record-breaking 70s here for Arkansas, Missouri. Even Illinois gets into some warmth. Let's just show you that before I get into the snow because this is something to talk about here. Uh, here we are Wednesday for Christmas Eve. You got mid 60s showing up here across southern Illinois into Missouri. You got low to mid 70s there. How about Christmas Day? Christmas Day on the Euro showing up 70, 60 in Chicago. I mean, we were minus 20, minus 30 for a feels like temperature about a week ago. And you're telling me Christmas Day is going to be 60 in Chicago? Wow, 66 in Clemson, pushing 70 across many areas of South Carolina Christmas Day, one of the warmer ones we've had in a long time. Now, that said, let's get back to snow talk uh, because there will be snow around Christmas and it could be some decent snow for here for New York. Here we are, the 23rd. It's not exactly Christmas Day, but the 23rd, Tuesday, we got snow moving into upstate New York, enhanced by the Great Lakes, not necessarily just Great Lake effect snow, but it will be enhanced by the lakes. Um, moving east into New York, uh, parts of New Hampshire, Vermont, down through Jersey, Massachusetts getting some snow. Could Boston have the ground covered? It's very possible. This is the 23rd afternoon and evening. Here's the 24th morning. Snow's pretty well moved on, so I think this is mainly a 23rd, 23rd night. So it's a Christmas Eve, Eve snow. Not, not, not ideal, I know. But at least the ground may still be covered by the time you get to Christmas Day. Uh, so it could be a white Christmas for many in the, in the Midwest up through the Northeast in, in, in this case. All right. Christmas Day itself, there could be a few rain showers because remember, we're warmer. Look at this. Even, even the Northeast, more mild. 
40s, 50s, okay? Uh, going to the 26th, 27th, that's when we see that. Let's look closer at totals here. We get a little bit of snow that comes in tonight, half an inch to an inch. Then we clear things back out, and here we go with that system coming in on the 23rd, 24th. Here we go. Look at that. I mean, it's not a lot, but it's also not nothing. So from Maine to New Hampshire to Vermont, we're talking two to four, maybe maybe up tops, maybe five inches. So again, northern parts of Pennsylvania, most of New York, into Boston. I mean, there will be some decent snows here, one to two, maybe three inches of snow on the 23rd. That's where I see a white Christmas being possible. I don't see it for Western North Carolina this year. I don't see it for anywhere really in Ohio, Illinois, Indiana. That's the way the cookie's crumbling this year. GFS, pretty well in line with what uh, that model just showed. Here we go with a little quick hit of some snow tonight. Here we go into the 21st, 22nd, 23rd. Let's get there. Here's 23rd. It's got a little bit of snow coming in here. And then it's gone. Not much for the 24th. 25th, it's got a little bit of snow for northern parts of Vermont and, and New Hampshire and the Maine, but it's not a lot. Just kind of stays active there. Now the GFS not showing as much snow. Let's get to it here. Right there. It's where the GFS or the European counterpart had two to four. This is more like one to three at, at best. Maybe, maybe a dusting in some of those locations. Now how about the storm system that follows? We got to pay attention and dial in here toward the last few days of the month, the first few days of January. And here's why. NAO, the North Atlantic Oscillation, takes a major dive. Now, just like when it rises up, you don't immediately get cold or immediately get warm right after it, but when it does turn negative like this, what it means is there's a better chance for blocking in the atmosphere. When there's blocking in the atmosphere, the jet stream gets kind of bunched up, and, and, and that energy's got to go somewhere, so the jet stream buckles south, and that can usually indicate colder air moving south. So this would indicate a stormier track, a colder track for the mid-Atlantic and the northeast and the midwest. So it's not always an exact science. When it turns this negative, which happens, it looks like, on the 28th, we would see eventually a cool down. All right, so this would be it's really negative on the 28th. Thereafter is when we would probably experience that. So the 28th through the 2nd, 3rd of January is a time frame I need this to be dialed in on. And the models do show signals of that. Let's take a closer look. Here's the full run. Let's just go back over here. I like this view a little bit better. Let's just do a full run of the European because what I did is I got you to the 27th here. Now, I'm going to be the first to tell you before the internet police come after me. Uh, there's not much uh, accuracy in the details this far out, but we are looking at signals here. We're not looking at it is going to snow exactly 3.2 inches on on the 28th no we're not what we're looking at is is there snow or is there not snow is it cold or is it not cold that's about it okay we're not looking at exact states although it's interesting to see and you look for trends so what i'll show you is today it's looking yes tomorrow it's looking like this and it's going to trend one way or the other that that's the way you forecast folks and anybody that's telling you otherwise is is telling you that because the internet is irresponsible and they are okay so somebody sees a map and then they take off or run with and don't check back in until seven days later yeah they're going to be surprised by what may or may not be coming but my goal here is to not only just update you but keep you up to date all right so here we go into um, the 27th 28th this is saturday sunday here we are got a cold front coming east and the 28th 29th we're turning colder. So you see that signal here. This is the jet stream getting a little more active. Not by much. It's got a little low pressure system right there. And then a deeper low coming in there. But otherwise, it's a pretty calm run on the European 12Z. Let's look 12 hours before that. Now, this is what the European does. It shows something. It takes it away. So does GFS, especially at this distance out. So here you are with the 26th. Quite a bit of snow here. This would follow the 23rd snow. 23rd snow's there. So the 26th snow would come in for Pennsylvania, eastern New York into Vermont, New Hampshire, Massachusetts. Watch that closely. Then it's got a little 
low diving in right here. This would be the 30th, 31st, kind of curling up right in there, bringing in some snow for Raleigh, the Carolinas, with a big dip in the jet stream. I mean, major cold air coming in. Now, that would be interesting. But remember, here's the new run of that model. Takes it away and is warm. One run later. So we have to look a little bit deeper. And to do that, we look at, one, the European AI. Because what that does is it gives us a blend of the models and, and how they're behaving. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to look at winter... Where are we at? Winter, winter, winter. Surface winter snow. To average out together all the different runs of the European, let's run the last full 12Z. Remember the operational run wasn't too keen on snow farther south, and neither is the ensemble run. But you go back to the 0Z yesterday, it's got it in North Carolina. So, I mean, there's a signal, then it went away. What's interesting is the GFS wants to show that signal as well. Let's go back to the last full run here. This would be the 6Z. Let's go past Christmas here. Here we are going into the 26th. Quick hit a little something. It's got the same storm coming up right there for New York up toward the northeast. And let me flip it to six hours. There we go. There's 28th. It's got a system right there. It's got some cold air damming and trenching it in for Virginia. Wintry mix toward the northeast. Then you got a low right here. So it's, it's got a low. It's differently placed than the European, but it's got it. Now that would be interesting. Then the secondary low comes in, a little Miller A, Miller B type thing right in there, January 2nd. So Almost an identical look on the GFS model. Granted, we're 360 hours out. So again, there's not much skill in, hey, remember it said this. But if we see that again tomorrow, or it may be four days from now, hey, the model's picked up on that signal back then. And it co-locates with, remember that NAO. Remember the NAO I showed you? Right here, turning negative. So that's why I'm looking for, I saw this first, and I'm like, huh, I wonder if there's some pattern identification of an active storm track. And sure enough, there was. So the GFS does show that at the 6Z. Let's see if it took it away at the 12Z. The scrub through is what I do here. You don't give it much exact thought this far out. January 1st, 2nd, it's got a low. It's just way too warm. Look at the ISO bars. The orange here would indicate warmer weather surging to the north. But it's, it's got the same low there. It just doesn't have us cold enough. How about the 18Z? Did it, did it show anything? Yep. It's got, the, it's got the pattern right. It's got the activity here. It's just here's your nearest source of cold air. Way up here. It's got us remaining warm. And folks, it is hard to shake cold air just like it's hard to shake warm air. So if we get really warm after Christmas or around Christmas, it's going to be hard to immediately shake that. So <clears throat> that's one to watch. So there you have it. You kind of know where we're going to see snow or where we're not going to see snow on Christmas Day. And you kind of know a little bit better about the pattern going into the first part of the year. One thing's for sure. It looks like we're trying to flip things back around. Whether or not that exactly happens or not, well, that's still yet to be determined. But the fun part of it is you're here on a weather page. We get to track it. And I'm going to do it responsibly for you in every step of the way. So, hey, folks, if you're new to this channel and you like to be able to see what it's going to do and have an insider look at what may happen or may not happen, uh, please like this video, subscribe, and turn on those notifications. I do promise to keep you up to date. Folks, thank you for being here. It is a blessing to be able to, to show you the weather every day, wherever you're watching from. And, hey, please let me do know where you're watching from because I know so many of you are watching from all over the area. We'll talk soon.